So needless to say, there are a lot of things going on in the world right now that require solid news coverage. So for example, you have Iraq being overrun by jihadists. That is, of course, ISIS. Uh, news came out earlier today uh, in a whole bunch of print outlets that said they basically already declared a caliphate. <laughs> They said, well, this is our state now. I think it ranges from parts of Syria and into Iraq, and they're making people swear allegiance to them. So it's a really, really sticky situation, to say the least. That's a big story. How about uh, the Syrian civil war, where Obama wants to send $500 million to the rebels? That's a big story. Uh, all different economic issues, like income inequality being at uh, a record high. Uh, health care, there's so many things, the list goes on and on of serious issues to cover. So what did the media focus on while all this is happening, and they did this predominantly over the weekend? The IRS. So, I want to play you a little mashup here of the IRS coverage from the past few days. And then I want to come back and describe to you how and why the media is covering this so much, and how the right-wing noise machine has succeeded as a result of this. If, if, we had, if, Nick, if, if Watergate happened today in a different media environment, and if, if Richard Nixon were a Democrat and we had this more fractured media environment where you couldn't have a couple of reporters beating the drum every day, I, I just wonder, and, and maybe we're more apathetic, but this should be outrageous to people and the, the possibility that that a president is using the power well, no, of the IRS I don't think well, there is a big difference here there is a big difference here there is I, I don't the Nixonian was Nixonian because yeah, Nixon had his hand exactly. on the button I, I don't think anybody even the most whacked out people are thinking President Obama exactly. is sitting in his office exactly. picking up the hotline to exactly. the exactly. We talk about the lapdog media ignoring Obama scandals why does this matter well, look, this is a criminal activity. I mean, the, all of these emails have suddenly disappeared, and then six people who are intimate, t intimately involved in this, ha their emails have suddenly disappeared. I mean, th they're lying like they're a bunch of third graders. President Obama is literally the president that Richard Nixon wish he was, because th no one's paying attention. No one is listening to this. The only people who are covering this is Fox. We have agencies right now in the government that are now being controlled by partisan politics. That is very, very dangerous. Oh, but I think that's what sort of blowing people's minds is we get it the computers crashed but to then say you know what we couldn't get it and so then we shredded the hard drive you you know as an attorney that that's one of the things you would pounce on and go whoa 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 wait a minute now why is this important and why is this noteworthy because this really demonstrates and highlights exactly how the right-wing media machine works so Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity and other people on Fox News Eric Bowling right there what they were doing for the past week or so is they were giving numbers about media coverage and they would say, oh, there's been more coverage about uh, Chris Christie than there's been about uh, the IRS and they would over and over and over they would repeat it and they would say, the media has a liberal bias, media has a liberal bias, why aren't they covering it, why aren't they covering this, why aren't they covering this? And the goal is you take something that's a non-issue, you cover it like it's a scandal 24-7, and then that bullies the other cowardly stations to cover it, and if they don't cover it, you say, ah, see, it proves it, 100% well, liberal bias, that's exactly what's going on here. So Fox News ends up, because they're so good at this, they're so good at propaganda, they're so good at repeating something that's a non-issue until it gets into everybody's psyche, okay? They do it so much that they they end up setting the entire mainstream media agenda, which is why I showed you there were conversations on MSNBC, there were conversations on CNN, there were conversations on Fox, there's conversations on the nightly news now. And again, just to be clear, even in conversations, like I purposely showed one there where they, they try to stand up for Obama in the whole situation, right? You have to understand that's irrelevant because it's not even about what conclusion you come to in the conversation. It's just the fact that you're having the conversation. People are gonna think, well, I mean, it, Something's got to be there because they're having the conversation, right? It's like when Nixon said, I'm not a criminal, or I'm not a crook. People went, oh, he must be a crook because he's denying that he's a crook. So when you just have the conversation, they win. Now think about what really happened with the IRS, and this is why this is so maddening. Conservative groups and liberal groups were scrutinized the exact same 
all of the conservative groups got approved for their status as a 501c3 group, okay? The only group that got rejected was a liberal group. So if anybody should be angry, it's the liberals. There's no conservative bias. They all got approved. Not only that, the head of the IRS was a conservative George W. Bush appointment. Okay, he's not, he doesn't have an anti-conservative bias. He is conservative. And then also I should mention that every group that got approved for this 501c3 status, they all shouldn't have got approved anyway. The real scandal is that they got approved when they shouldn't have gotten approved. Why? Because 501c3, under, under uh, tax law, you have to be specifically for social welfare. And all these Tea Party groups were not for social welfare. They were for electioneering, which is political purposes. Okay, so they're getting away with, uh, you know, paying less taxes, and they shouldn't be. That's the real scandal here. But Fox, see, this is what Fox does. They harp away on it, and now it's a thing. They harp away a, a, on it, and now MSNBC is covering it. Uh, CNN is covering it. You know, NBC Nightly News, ABC Nightly News. Oh, oh emails. What happened with the emails? Why are the emails? So what happened is Lois Lear Learner's emails, they, for whatever reason, can't access them, and they said they've been deleted and they can't find them or whatever the case is. You know what my response to that is? Good! Because there's not even something that you could theoretically be looking for to find her guilty of. Even if you find the emails, what, what, what's it going to say? What are you looking for? They don't even know what they're looking for. That's the point. There is no scandal here. Conservatives are angry. They don't even know why they're angry. CNN and MSNBC are covering it. They don't even know why they're covering it. There is no scandal. I just explained to you exactly the situation that went on, but the conservatives are still bitching and moaning like they're being unfairly treated. Meanwhile, even think about if they did get extra scrutiny, which they didn't, but even if they did, the fucking names of the groups are like wehatetaxes.org. These are all anti-tax organizations. You think maybe you should scrutinize them a little bit when they're filing for a certain tax status? I think so. Call me crazy. Again, I made this analogy the other day. It's like somebody saying, I heart robbery, but don't you dare look into me, police officers, whether or not I heart robbery. Just because I set up the I heart robbery group means that you think I'm involved in robbery? How dare you? What an illogical connection. It's so stupid. And the last thing I'll say, man, this is the problem with the media today. When right-wing radio and Fox News harp away on something over and over, then the mainstream media covers it because they think, oh my God, if we don't cover this, they're going to say we have a liberal bias. Totally disregarding the fact that you looked into it and it's false. There's nothing there, so you shouldn't cover it. Tell them to fuck off if they bitch and moan about, oh, they're not covering the story. Because it's a non-story. Now, meanwhile, what do the liberals do? They suck. MSNBC sucks at this. The only thing they've covered sufficiently is Bridgegate. Oh, well done, a story about a fucking bridge. Don't get me wrong, it's still a serious issue. But instead of covering that nonstop and saying, oh my God, don't vote for Chris Christie or Republicans because of this, how about you cover the real scandal in the country? Like, I don't know, the fact that because of Republican governors, 17,000 people are going to die because they don't have access to Medicaid under the Medicaid expansion, which is part of Obamacare. They opted out. They said, we're not going to do the Medicaid expansion. It was a Harvard study that found that directly because of that, 17,000 people are going to die. They don't have to die. They don't have to die. If the Republican governors just fucking swipe their pen across the paper, that's it. Problem solved. 17,000 American lives saved. But they're condemning 17,000 American people to death because they're not doing the Medicaid expansion. And the fucking shitty media, MSNBC, has not harped away on that. They harped away on a fucking bridge. And now some people cover the bridge. But if you cover the 17,000 deaths and you don't stop talking about that coverage, then eventually CNN has to cover it, eventually Fox News has to cover it. You're not learning their tricks. They're so much better at the tricks than you are.